Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Professor Abdul Salam Yasin Taha from the College of Medicine, University of Suleimani, giving a talk on the approach to chest X-ray. You can watch this lecture and other lectures by visiting my YouTube channel using the, U the URL at the bottom of the slide. The approach to normal chest X-ray. In order to recognize abnormality, you need to know what a normal chest X-ray looks like. So for example, the chest X-ray on the next slide is normal. How would you interpret it? This is a chest X-ray of an adult male, PA and lateral views showing normal both lung fields, central cardiac shadow, central trachea, central mediastinum, no bony lesions, and no soft tissue abnormalities. The approach to the interpretation of the chest X-ray can be abbreviated by the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, in which A stands for the airway, B, bones and soft tissue, C, cardia, D, diaphragm, E, effusions, F, fields, that is lung fields, G, gastric bubble, H, hyla and mediastinum, and finally, I stands for impression. So we start by the airway. The, as you can see, the ciliary of trachea, right and left minister bronchi, the upper uh, lower bronchus and bronchus intermediates on the right side, the upper lower bronchus and lower lower bronchus on the left side, and the sub carotidal angle, which is less than 90 degrees normally. Bones and soft tissue. We should be able to see the clavicles, the scapulae, the vertebrae, and the ribs, the posterior and anterior ends of the ribs. The soft tissue, thick soft tissue due to obesity may obscure some underlying structures such as lung markings. Breast tissue may obscure the costophrenic angles, like in this slide, the breast tissues have obscured the costophrenic angles. So the soft tissues are examined systematically starting from the supra clavicular fossae in which lymph node enlargement may be seen, the chest wall in which surgical emphysema may be observed, and the region under the diaphragm in which pneumoperitoneum may be observed. In this slide, we can see subcutaneous emphysema on the chest radiograph on the left side, radio lucent shadow, in the soft tissue of the chest wall, the neck, as well as the mediastinum. And on the right side, we have a new peritoneum, air under both diaphragms. New mediastinum refers to the presence of air in the mediastinum, which appears as radiolucent shadow, like in, in the mediastinum, like in this film which extends also to the region of the neck. Pneumopericardium is the presence of air in the pericardial sac, like in this film. C stands for the cardia. Normally, two thirds of the heart should lie on the left side with one third on the right. The heart should take up less than half of the thoracic cavity, that is, the cardiothoracic ratio should be less than 50%. 
the left atrium and left ventricle create the left cardiac border. The right heart border is created entirely by the right atrium because the right ventricle lies anteriorly and therefore doesn't have a contribution to the right cardiac border on the PA view. So if we look at these uh, chest radiographs, on the left side, we see that the right cardiac border is formed by the right atrium, above which is the SVC, and below which is the IVC. And on the left side, the left cardiac border is formed by the aortic arch, followed by the pulmonary trunk, then the left auricle, and finally, the left ventricle. In the right cardiac border, in the right lateral view, we see that the uh, uh, right ventricle is located anteriorly, and uh, uh, at the uh, posterior aspect of the cardiac shadow, we have the left atrium and left ventricle. And here there is a correlation between the anatomical and radiographic uh, appearances uh, on the uh, lateral view. The right ventricle is located uh, anteriorly, while the left atrium and left ventricle are located posteriorly, and therefore an enlargement of the left atrium may compress the oesophagus. How to calculate the cardiothoracic ratio? Uh, we have uh, the transverse diameter of the heart and the transverse diameter of the chest. C refers to the maximum uh, transverse uh, thoracic diameter. Uh, the transverse diameter of the heart is uh, measured by uh, 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 calculating A and B. A stands for the uh, region or the distance from the uh, maximum right cardiac border and the midline, and B stands for the distance from the maximum left cardiac border and the midline. So A plus B over C is the cardiothoracic ratio. The cardiothoracic ratio should be less than 0.5. A cardiothoracic ratio more than 0.5 suggests cardiomegaly in adults, while a cardiothoracic ratio greater than 0.6 suggests cardiomegaly in a newborn. One of the radiographic signs is called match effects. Sometimes a normal chest X-ray will show a thin, well-defined black line around one or both lateral margins of the heart. An optical illusion resulting from overlap of superimposed normal structures. The illusion uh, is known as a match band or match effect, like in this uh, chest radiograph. D stands for the diaphragm. Both diaphragms should form a sharp margin with the lateral chest wall, creating the uh, costophrenic angles. Both diaphragms, diaphragm contours should be clearly visible medial to the spine at the uh, region of the uh, uh, cardiophrenic, cardiophrenic angle. A normal variant of the diaphragm is a diaphragmatic hump like in this uh, film. Effusions, plural effusion, effusions. Normally, the pleura and uh, pleural spaces will only be visible when there is an abnormality present. Common abnormalities seen with the pleura include pleural thickening or the presence of fluid and or air in the plural space. So the plural space is a potential space, and it is very important to notice the uh, uh, plural sinus or plural 
recess on the right side and on the left side. So pearl effusion may take different uh, forms uh, uh, on chest radiograph. We might have a meniscus sign, a homogeneous opacity of securing the uh, costal phrenic angle with a concave upper border. We might see a gas fluid level indicating a hydro pneumothorax. We might see what we call the phantom tumor. The phantom tumor is a radiographic uh, finding caused by fluid localizing in an interlobar fissure of the lung, secondary to, con to congestive heart failure. So it's not a tumor actually, it is a, an insisted effusion. So effusion may be uh, uh, in the form of subpulmonic collection. Uh, there is a collection of fluid uh, beneath the inferior surface of the lower lobe, or it might be a massive effusion causing total opacification of the hemithorax. The presence of air in the pleural space called pneumothorax may be a uh, large uh, pneumothorax causing total collapse of the lung, like the film on the left side, or it might be a partial pneumothorax. Lung fields. Normally, there are visible markings throughout the lungs due to the pulmonary arteries and veins continuing all the way to the chest wall. Both lungs should be scanned, starting at the apices and working downward, comparing the right and left lung fields at the same level. So the lung fields are divided into upper, middle, and lower zones. The upper zone is the region located above an imaginary uh, line at the level of the second coastal cartilage. The middle zone uh, is the region between the second and fourth coastal cartilage, and the lower uh, zone is the region uh, below the uh, fourth coastal cartilage. The uh, landmarks which can be seen normally in the lung fields include the horizontal fissure uh, on the PA view. So on a PA radiograph, the minor fissure can be uh, often seen as a faint horizontal line dividing the right middle lobe from the right upper lobe. The major fissure fissures are not usually seen on a PA view, but they are seen, but they, are, they could be seen on a lateral radiograph as an oblique line, as an oblique line separating the left upper lobe from the left lower lobe on the left side and the middle lobe on the right side from the lower lobe uh, on the right side. Pulmonary venous hypertension may be diagnosed by observing what we call curly B lines. So uh, interstitial edema with curly B lines can be observed in this view. We have to know the uh, location of different lobes on the uh, plain chest radiograph, because uh, this knowledge will help us to localize uh, lesions or abnormalities on the chest radiograph. So here, the right upper lobe uh, uh, takes this area on the PA view and takes this area on the lateral view. This is the region of the right middle lobe on the PA and lateral film. And this is the region of the right lower lobe on the PA and lateral film. And in regard to the left lung, that is the region of the left upper lobe in the uh, PA view and in the lateral view. And this is the region of the left lower lobe in the PA view and the lateral radiograph. The division is made by the uh, oblique or the major fissure. 
the hidden areas that uh, we should we should uh, uh, be uh, careful around about them uh, include the apex ribs often obscure the underlying lung in the region of the apex the hilar regions because the hilar vessels obscure the lung anteriorly and posteriorly the cardiac shadow uh, may hide a considerable amount of the lung posteriorly and the lung posterior to the diaphragm is hidden by the liver, stomach, and spleen. Gastric bubble is seen uh, underneath the left hemidiaphragm in the PA and lateral view. Hilum and mediastinum. The hyla consists primarily of the major bronchi and the pulmonary veins and arteries. The hyla are not symmetrical, but contain the same basic structures on each side. The hyla may be at the same level, but the left hilum is commonly higher than the right. Both hyla should be of similar size and density. So this just a radiograph shows the location of the right and left hyla, and the left hilum is uh, higher than the right. In pulmonary arterial hypertension, there is an enlargement of the pulmonary trunk and main pulmonary arteries. Disproportionately, we have small peripheral vessels. The lung fields uh, seem to be oligemic, and there is what you call the prune tree appearance. Pruning is when you selectively remove branches from a tree. So in pulmonary arterial hypertension, the arteries in the outer two thirds of each lung are smaller than those at the hyla, giving the appearance of peripheral pruning. The mediastinum, the trachea should be centrally located or slightly to the right side. The aortic arch is the first convexity on the left side of the mediastinum. The pulmonary artery is the next convexity on the left and the branches should be traceable as it fans out through the lungs. The lateral margin of the SVC lies above the right cardiac border. So this is uh, a chest radiograph showing the uh, heart and the region uh, between the uh, ascending aorta and the aortic knuckle and the paratracheal region. Uh, so these are the uh, main measurements of the mediastinum. The mediastinal uh, compartments and boundaries. Uh, in the lateral view, the uh, mediastinum is divided into anterior, middle, and posterior by uh, imaginary planes. So the anterior uh, compartment is bounded anteriorly by the sternum and posteriorly by the anterior aspect of the trachea and the uh, posterior margin of the heart. The middle mediastinum is bounded anteriorly by the anterior uh, aspect of the trachea and posterior margin of the heart. And posteriorly, the middle mediastinum is bounded by a vertical line drawn along the thoracic uh, vertebrae one centimeter behind their anterior uh, margin. The posterior mediastinum uh, is located be, or bounded anteriorly by a vertical line uh, drawn along the thoracic uh, vertebrae, one centimeter behind their anterior margin, and posteriorly it is bounded by the costo vertebral junction. Well, what is the importance of knowledge of division of the mediastinum into different compartments? The idea because the uh, lesions uh, of different pathologies are located uh, uh, in different compartments. 
sometimes the plain X-ray may show some uh, devices like a cardiac pacemaker as in this patient. The value of the previous chest radiograph, previous chest X-rays are your best friend. You may see a real or possible abnormality on the chest X-ray. So the question, was this abnormality there before? Has it got larger or smaller? Is it unchanged? A previous chest X-ray will often highlight an important but subtle change. On the other hand, uh, it will frequently provide reassurance that all is well when there is no change in the size of the abnormality. Silhouette sign is uh, an important radiographic sign. Silhouette sign, uh, and when, when an intrathoracic lesion uh, touching a border of the heart, the aorta, the diaphragm will obliterate part of that border on the diaphragm. So in this chest radiograph, the right cardiac border uh, is invisible because of a nearby homogeneous opacity in the right lower zone, which uh, therefore silhouette sign is positive and the diagnosis most probably is a pneumonia of the right lower lobe. So in this table, we can see uh, uh, positive silhouette signs in different regions according to the location of the abnormality. For example, the, uh, if we have a right lower lobe or basal segment lesion, we might have a silhouette of the right diaphragm and, and so on. Air bronchogram is an important radiographic sign. Normally, uh, both the bronchi and the uh, adjacent lung parenchyma or alveoli contain air, so both of them are radiolucent. But when the uh, lung parenchyma is consolidated and the alveolar air is replaced by fluid and or cells, the lung parenchyma gets uh, radio opaque and this will outline the air-filled bronchi. So when the internal tubular outline of a bronchus is visible within a thoracic opacity, that is called an air bronchogram. It is most commonly associated with a simple pneumonia. Sometimes it occurs with pulmonary edema. The cardiac density the density or the opacity of cardiac shadow should be equal on both sides of the spine. If there is a, any difference in density, then look for evidence of pneumonia or lower lobe collapse or a lower lobe mass on the denser side. There should be no abrupt change in density across the cardiac shadow. The lung apices. Thickening of the apical pleura, sometimes referred to as an apical cap, occurs normally in 10% of middle-aged and elderly people. Unfortunately, a superior sulcus tumor, example, a pancreas tumor, can mimic an apical cap. Peripheral opacities. When you have an opacity in the periphery of the lung, this opacity might be intrapulmonary pulmonary, or might be plural or extra plural. So how to differentiate between these lesions? If the angle between the peripheral opacity and the uh, chest wall is an acute angle, then the opacity is intrapulmonary. While if the angle is uh, obtuse, then the uh, lesion is uh, plural or extra plural. So an intrapulmonary opacity, abuting or touching the pleura, forms an acute angle at the interface, while a plural or extra plural lesion forms an obtuse angle rather than an acute angle. 
Hyler assessment. The left hilum should be higher than the right. Occasionally, the hyla are at the same level, but the right hilum should never be higher than the left. Most unilateral and large hyla are, or are both lumpy, pumpy, and denser than the opposite normal side. Some normal hyla will appear prominent, but are actually within the normal range. Hylum convergence sign and hylum overlay sign are important signs. They may be a bit confusing. The hylum convergence sign distinguishes a large hylum due to a large pulmonary uh, arteries from enlargement due to a tumor. If vessels arise from or converge directly uh, onto the hilar shadow, then the enlargement is vascular. If the vessels appear to arise or converge medial to the lateral aspect of the hilar shadow, then the enlargement is due to a tumor mass. In the hilum overlay sign, this sign is often misunderstood and misinterpreted. Hilum lateral to the lateral border of the mass is a cardiac enlargement, while hilum medial to the lateral border of the mass is a mediastinal mass. So here there is a, 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 an opacity and the hilum is medial to the lateral uh, border of the mass. Therefore, the uh, diagnosis is a mediastinal tumor. So this is uh, a demonstration of both the hilum overlay sign and the hilum convergence sign. In the hilum overlay sign, if the hilum is medial, to the lateral border of the shadow, then the shadow is due to a tumor mass. While if the vessels converge directly to the hilum, then this is uh, a vascular enlargement. Here, uh, in this just radiograph, there is a, a homogeneous opacity on the left side. with uh, the left cardiac border is invisible. The left hilar vessels are seen medial to the lateral border of the lesion. Therefore, hilum overlay sign and hilum convergence sign are positive. And the diagnosis is an anterior mediastinal lesion. The descending pulmonary arteries or the lower lobe pulmonary arteries. Always look for and identify the lower lobe pulmonary arteries. Each will have a diameter similar to a little finger. If either is missing, look for any other chest X-ray features that suggest collapse of a lower lobe. Right lower lobe pulmonary artery is identif identified in approximately 94% of normal chest X-rays, while the left descending pulmonary artery is sometimes more difficult to identify. It is visible in 62% of normal people only. So if we look at this chest radiograph, we can see the right descending pulmonary artery which is a normal finding. Rip assessment. If a rip abnormality is suspected on clinical grounds, example, following a trauma, then before deciding that the ribs are normal, we have to rotate the image through 90 degrees and assess the ribs in this position, and then turn the original image through 180 degrees uh, that's to say, look at it upside down and evaluate the ribs in the new position. 
before we comment on the rib and say there is no rib fracture. The right paratracheal strip appearance. The wall of the right side of a trachea is visualized in approximately 60% of adult patients. The air within the trachea outlines its inside margin and the lung air outlines its outside margin. In 40% of normal adults, the lung doesn't abute or touch the outside wall. And so this strip or line will not be seen. So if we look at this diagram and this, this X-ray, we can see a visible right paratracheal strip and it's also visible on the CT scan. When the right paratracheal strip is visible, it should measure less than 2.5 millimeter in width. If it is more than 2.5 millimeter, it may indicate adjacent paratracheal lymph node enlargement. Paravertebral or paraspinal strip is also visible, maybe visible on the X-ray. What is the paravertebral uh, strip? Left paravertebral strip is visualized on most normal frontal chest X-rays. It extends from the level of the aortic arch to the diaphragm. It represents a deflection of the pleura posteriorly by the adjacent descending thoracic aorta. Any focal bulge of the left paravertebral strip indicates a vertebral pathology, while a right paravertebral strip is not visualized until middle age, when age-related marginal osteophytes can cause pleural displacement. Therefore, a visualized right paravertebral strip is always abnormal unless age related osteophyte formation is a present. The thoracoabdominal sign and the cervicothoracic signs, the other important. Posterior costophrenic sulcus normally extends more caudally than anterior basal lung. Therefore, a lesion that extends below the dome of the diaphragm must be in posterior chest, whereas a lesion that terminates at the dome must be anterior. So here we have a lesion which uh, extends below the dome of the diaphragm. Therefore, it is located posteriorly. What about the cervical thoracic sign? If the lateral outline of a mass is visualized above the clavicle, like in number two position here, then the mass is situated posteriorly. If the lateral outline of the mass fades away as it reaches the clavicle, the lower border of the clavicle, like in position one here, then the mass is situated anteriorly. So here we have uh, an a big opacity in the upper uh, chest. Uh, the upper limit of the opacity is below the level of the clavicle. Therefore, the lesion is located anteriorly. And that's the value of the uh, cervical uh, thoracic sign. What about the spine sign? This is simple. When the air is displaced by higher attenuation material, such as consolidation, fluid, or a mass, like bronchogenic carcinoma, paraspinal neurogenic tumor, then the lower thoracic vertebral bodies become more radiodense. So here, the lower thoracic vertebrae are more radiodense due to the presence of a posterior a neurogenic tumor, and this is a positive spine sign. 
The subcarinal angle, the uh, carina is a site of division of the trachea into right and left menstrual bronchi. The normal subcarinal angle varies between 50 to 100 degrees. So an angle greater than 100 degrees implies that the two menstrual bronchi are pushed apart. This can be due to subcarinal tumor, lymph node enlargement, or an enlarged left atrium like in mitral stenosis. The azygous vein. The azygous vein enters the SVC to the right of the tracheal bifurcation. If the transverse diameter of the azygous vein uh, exceeds one centimeter, like in this patient, the patient could be in heart failure or have lymph node enlargement or portal hypertension. This X-ray belongs to a patient with a portal hypertension and an enlarged azygous vein shadow. In pediatric patients, on an infant's AP radiograph, the normal cardiothoracic ratio should not exceed 60%. On a child's PA radiograph, the normal cardiothoracic ratio can be slightly above 50%, though by the second year, it rarely exceeds 50%. The thymic shadow is visible at birth, normally in volutes between the ages of two and eight years. So this uh, medicinal enlargement in this patient is due to a normal big thymus in uh, an infant. The take home message of our lecture Look carefully for patient identification. Be systematic in your approach. Remember that this is a chest X-ray rather, rather than a lung X-ray. So the abnormalities are not confined to the lung, but may be related to uh, uh, soft tissue abnormalities, bony abnormalities, cardiac abnormalities, and so on. Constraint on hidden areas and always compare with all and lateral views uh, if available. And uh, with this a beautiful picture of Baghdad, Iraq, I would like to thank you for your watching and listening to the lecture. This is Professor. Abdul Salam Yasin Taha, signing off from the College of Medicine, University of Suleimani.